Welcome to the first quest of the Stories of Gilinor audiobook series, where these quests follow the story of Lotharius and other supporting characters through their events and world development. Today's story is Druidic Ritual. Following the introductions to Gertrude's cat, we at last had known Lotharius to be unconscious at the inn in Falador, under the direct care of Kaylee. Kaylee had left him in room 3, upstairs in the inn. Lotharius being very much dazed from his drinking and clearly hung over, is fast asleep on the bed. Outside the inn, a cloaked figure is standing in the rain. After checking the building signage, the figure comes inside. As the figure enters the room, the room goes silent, and the individual starts to walk towards the bar counter. People in the bar start to turn their gaze away, preventing accidental eye contact, while others start asking for their checks and leave. As the figure gets to the bar, Kaylee steps in front of her fellow barmaid. Hello, what can we help you with? Asked Kaylee. Lotharius. The figure responded. There's no Lotharius here. Replied Kaylee. You lie! The figure moves his hand towards the stairs. I feel his power. I know he's close. I need to see him. Well, you're wrong! The figure slams both of his hands down on the countertop. You will tell me where he is, and you will tell me now. Tina, go get the guards, hurry! As the barmaid starts to run. Wait, 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 I'm sorry. The figure said, as he removed his hood. It's of great importance, please. Kaylee, still uncertain of this man, glances in his eyes and sees sincerity. Her uneasy feelings start to wane. He's in the third room upstairs. We'll be watching you. Responds Kaylee. Thank you. The figure says. The figure coming up the staircase looks around the hallway, seeking for an indication of which room is which. Luckily, there's a small engraved number on each door. The figure opens room 3 to see an unconscious Lotharius. As he approaches him, he starts an incantation which lifts Lotharius upright, as if he was standing. Ahem. Lotharius, still rather dazed, opens his eyes. What, what do you wish want? Is that how you treat old friends? The figure said, as it becomes more in focus from Lotharius' point of view. Ms. Gog, what are, we, what are you doing here? We have work for you. There's trouble stirring south of Varrock. Lotharius, still not quite fully awake, looks around the room. Where's... The adventurer? I have no idea. However, I have strict instructions from Cedridor to get you on your task as fast as possible. Which... is... Asked Lotharius. We're going to need help. The Order of Wizards can't do this alone. We need the assistance of the Druids northwest of here. Mizgog sighs. Those Druids are Gothics. We haven't had their help in years. What makes you think they'll step in? Replied Lotharius. Once they learn what those Dark Mages have figured out to do using their stone circle, they'll help us with haste. Go now. As Mizgog releases Lotharius from his spell, with Lotharius not fully ready to stand, collapses on the floor. Ow. Clambering down the stairs of the inn, he starts to walk over to the northern door. As he slums here and there, he slowly makes his way. As he approaches the door, he nearly vomits. Okay, Lothar, you got this. While nearly collapsing, he walks through the door. Mizgog, with his cloak back up covering his face, comes downstairs. There are some guards speaking with one of the barmaids about him as Kaylee comes over. You didn't kill him. I'm impressed. She said while rolling her eyes. Now get out of here. While walking by, Mizgog stops and hands her a full bag of gold. Do not tell his friend anything. As Mizgog leaves, Kaylee is looking at the decently sized bag of gold and looks up at the empty doorway where Lotharius went. Why? She said to herself as a worried expression takes over her face. We find Lotharius nearing the city limits, and he's still sluggish with a throbbing headache. This baby is a <laughs> idea. As he stumbles forward, as Lotharius gets to a small park north of Falador, he notices the Ceridoman statue while he continues to walk down the path to Taverly. Lotharius is only a mile away from the Taverly gate, as sleep beckons, and he falls over unconscious on the ground. Some time passes. What's that smell? It's food! Lotharius said to himself as he jolts awake with Norcal holding his head, while Barry waves a kebab in his face. What are you doing out here, lad? Asked Norcal. Lotharius, looking around, could tell it's the next day. I'm going to Tavali. I have business there by the order of wizards. As he grabs the kebab from Bari and sits up. Thank you. As he eats rather quickly. Mmm, these are so much better when warm. 
Yeah, that's where I keep them in my back right cheek pocket. <laughs> As Lotharia spits out the food. Ah, don't fret about it. I clean myself monthly. As Barry hands him a water flask. Lotharius, giving him a smiling grin, drinks some of the water. You're lucky no one killed you while you were out. Mentioned NorCal. How did you find me? <gasps> Dorick saw you last night, puking your brains out. He sent us a messenger weasel. Replied Barry. I thank you both. As Lotharius stands up, gathering all of his supplies, he hands back Barry's flask and continues to walk towards the Taverly Gate. Just a tad bit more sober. You don't suppose he knows his friend went to Varrock now, did he? Asked Norcal. I don't think so, lad. Stated Barry. Perhaps we should tell him. It's not our business. Now back to the watch with ye. Replied Barry. Lotharius gathering his thoughts, knowing he's wasted time by being hungover. So he walks faster. Ugh. But not Ugh. too quickly, he thought, as he nearly fell over again. As Lotharius finally gets to the Taverly Gate, he tries to open it, but the gate is stuck. Oh, come on. He said. As he fiddles with it, the gate remains locked till you deliver my fee. Lotharius looking up to see a man standing on the wall on top of the gate. What fee would that be? Asked Lotharius. Membership. In order to travel through my toll gate, you need to pay me five? No. Wait, twelve gold pieces. It'll allow you one month of access through this gate. The man said. And what if <laughs> about the other side of this gate and the membership runs out? <laughs> it's a magical contract. You'll be teleported to Lumbridge, just in case you can't renew your fee to me. That seems a bit expensive. It's not the Third Age anymore. It takes money to keep my toll gate looking pretty. Lotharius, thinking about it for a moment. Sure, here's your membership fee. As he tosses up a pouch of gold up to the man. Thank you for your purchase. Have you ever heard of Treasure Hunter? I have these keys. Oh, sod off. Said Lotharius as he goes through the gate and is now in the territory of Taverly. Lotharius looks around to see this beautiful small town. I can see why the druids picked this particular place. As he walked towards the town center, as another headache started to stir its head, he got the attention of one of the druids walking home. Where is the leader of this clan? Asked Lotharius. Cha, dude. Like, welcome to Taverly. We got our righteous leader and all, near the stone circle. And where would that be? Asked Lotharius. Oh, wait, what? Your leader. Oh, oh right, sorry bro. I've had like a long day. I've been up for about 20 minutes. I'm already over it. Anyways, dude, he's like over there. Yeah. As the druid points north of their direction, Lotharius, walking north, starts to see tall rock formations in a circle on the horizon, and nearly tripped by fault of his intoxication. I really need to sober up faster. Coming up to the formation, he notices that there are four druids standing near this stone circle. Excuse me. Asked Lotharius, Kekamex, noticing the wizard, turning his attention to him, and opens his arms. Welcome to Taverly, our Gothic's worshipping site. My name is Kikimex. How may we serve you? Lotharius notices that all of the druids are staring at him. He responds. I've come to bear news. There's these dark mages south of Verak, and they've caused quite an issue. Kakomex's face went from a smile to concern. The same mages that overrun us? We're in the process of getting a ritual in order to bless the stone circle they stole. Good. Then we're on the same mission. I'd like to... Oh, help you with this. Asked Lotharius. The druids turn to talk amongst themselves. They, in unison, turn towards Lotharius. We will accept your help. Do you need anything from us in return? He asked. Well, I'd like to prevent them from summoning a demon to this world. What is its name? Delrith the Defiler. Immediately, the other druids start to whisper and murmur amongst themselves. Silence. Because I am tasked with blessing our new stone circle here, you'll need to find Sanfu. He's in charge of the ritual. He's south of here in a large building on the second floor. He explained. Finishing their conversation, Lotharius heads over to the building as directed. And upon going inside, he hears a large crash upstairs. So he pulls up the staircase. That was the wrong flipping combination. 
Sandrew said, while writing down notes in a book. Looking around the room, there are books stacked high, scraping the ceiling, and papers scattered across the floor. Sandfu, finishing his notes, puts his pencil alongside the top of his ear, and notices Lotharius. Oh, sorry about that. I'm trying to narrow down the ingredients for this potion here. My name is Sandfu. How may I help you? I am here with the Order of Wizards. I am helping Kakumex with his ritual. Sandfu's face lights up. Thank goodness. The other druids have not been much help to me in this endeavor. As he scratches his head with a vial, Lotharius stepping closer. Let's solve it then. Perfect. As Sanfu opens his notes and shows Lotharius. As Herblores have recently acquired gift from Guthix, only one of us has mastered it. Since I don't have that resource of knowledge, it's been trial and error for me. What was your, ooh, last combination? Lotharius said as he slightly tipped over. Sandfu turns the page. Sorted meats from different animals. If we get the combination correct, the cauldron will turn the meats blue. He turns the page again. The final test I want to try today involves raw bear meat, raw rat meat, raw chicken, and raw beef. If this succeeds, we'll be one step closer. Lotharius, after asking to get the book, looks over the notes. Do you have these ingredients? Sanfu, looking over his notes, realized that he's out of ingredients. Sanfu explains that he has a butcher. He then explains this to Lotharius, who responds, Well, I'll go with you. As Sanfu's face lights up again. Great. It's not far for those ingredients. I have a butcher who sells them to me for a discount in Catherby. The fishing capital of Gilanor? One and only. We just have to cross White Wolf Mountain. We find Lotharius and Sanfu making their trek across the mountain. You sure, you sure this is the right, is the right way? way? Yes, 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 yes. I left Red Flags to indicate where I've been before, replied Sanfu as they were making their journey. In the distance, Lotharius saw two yellow eyes. Sanfu! Sanfu. As Lotharius drops to the ground, Sanfu, turning around and not seeing Lotharius, shrugs and turns back around. Shock takes him. A gigantic wolf stands before him, looking him dead in the eyes. <laughs> Good boy. Sanfu said nervously. The wolf starts to raise its front left paw. Sanfu can see the enormous claws and panic sets in. He can't move. This is the end, he thought, as a lightning bolt soars through the sky and hits the wolf in the back, paralyzing it in the process. The wolf falls to the ground unconscious. Lotharius running over after casting his spell, hops on top of the wolf and grabs some of its hair, stuffing it into a satchel and then he casts a confused spell on the wolf. We must not, we linger. Must not linger, Lotharius said as he looks to Sanfu. With haste. With haste. Quietness, calmness, and peace rushes over Sanfu and Lotharius as they arrive at Catherby on the other side of White Wolf Mountain. Where is this butcher located then? Asked Lotharius. He... on the north side of town. As he points in the direction, Walking through the town, there is so much to do, as you can see the fishermen working hard on the seashore, with kids running through the streets with their toys, marketeers selling their exotic lobsters and swordfish. Lobsters, 32 gold pieces each. Swordfish here, get your swordfish. King Arthur needs recruits. Become a knight today. Of course, all wonderful sounds and activities. It astounds me that such peace can be found next to such a dangerous mountain said Sanfu. These borders are protected by knights by the sounds of it. What do you druids do on your end to ensure the wolves don't come down? Asked Lotharius. Hmm. I've never given it much thought. Sanfu said while tossing his utensil in the air as the two arrived at the butcher. Meats and cheeses are freshly sliced. I've done that. Good. The butcher said as they entered the shop. Ah, Sanfu. Hector! as the two give each other a hug. <laughs> what can I get you today, my friend? Asked Hector. Sanfu pulls out his notebook and skims the pages. Let's see. Raw bear, raw rat, raw chicken, and raw beef. Hector, scratching his neck, walks behind the counter into his back room. He peers out of the doorway. I check to see if I have it, Hector said. Lotharius, walking slowly around his shop, sees all the different cuts of exotic meat in their respective display cases. Hector comes back out. I had to ensure I had raw rat. Not many eat it anymore. Because of this, it will be more expensive, my friend. As Hector puts the raw beef, chicken, and bear meat on the counter. 750 gold pieces. Oh, great. Well, that really is a discount. 
As Sanfu checks his coin pouch, realizing he only has 520 GP. Sanfu, taking a step back. Ah, I don't have it. I'm sorry, Sanfu. Those creatures are hard to attack as is. As Lotharius approaches the counter in confidence. How about a bottle? As he placed some of the wolf fur onto the counter. Ah, this is some nice fur. As long as you didn't steal it, wizard, you have a deal. A pleasure doing business. I wouldn't peg a wizard to someone who's collecting things. Sometimes collecting something small leads to something grand. Lotharius said smiling as the two were leaving the store. Another man walked in. Ah, my delivery. Always good to see you, my friend. Good old cow killer 1337. Sanfu making additions in his notebook. I think that's everything. Let's try this out. Back in Taverly, Sanfu adds the ingredients to the cauldron. As it bubbles, the ingredients turn blue. Perfect. Now I've figured out the right combination. As he jolts down the information into his booklet, taking the meat out of the cauldron, it turns back to its regular color. Wait, isn't it supposed to stay blue? No, as this cauldron isn't enchanted, but ours is in a dungeon nearby. You'll need to use the Cauldron of Thunder in the Taverly Dungeon. As Sanfu closed his book, Sanfu opens a nearby window and points southeast. You can actually see it from here. As Lotharius looks to see a ladder in the middle of burnt foliage and dead trees. Just north of the entrance is double doors guarding our cherished cauldron. Just watch out for the security system we put in place. Dunk these meats in there and they'll become enchanted. After that, smooth sailing. After the instructions, Sanfu gave a big smile. Lotharius walking out of the building, turning to the left, heads southeast towards the Taverly Dungeon. Noticing a druid washing his clothes in the riverbed, Lotharius thinks to himself, He's got a lot of clothes. Arriving at the ladder that leads down into the dungeon, he places his hand on the ladder. Ew. Quickly removing his hand. Dragons, surely. As he casts an ice spell around his palms to safely climb down the ladder. Coming to the dungeon floor, there's a gigantic pipe to his right, and he notices a broken brick wall to his left. He said, go forward. Lotharius tells himself as he approaches two doors on his right, with two armor statues on both sides of the door. As Lotharius opens the large door by pulling the large circular ornament, the two armor stands come alive and brash their weapons. Scurrying past them quickly and closing the door, he hears the bubbling of the thunder cauldron behind him. As Lotharius walks towards the cauldron, the bloom and the smell coming from the pot become more prominent. So that's what thunder smells like. Hmm. Dunking each of the items in the pot, the pot transforms them into enchanted versions of themselves, and they share a remarkable bluish glow. This should all be in order. As he's walking towards the ladder to exit the dungeon. I'm back, Sanfu. All the ingredients are good to go. Sanfu, scratching his head while being in deep thought with a vial, turns to look at Lotharius. That's great news. Hand him over. Quickly now. As Lotharius watches in awe, Sanfu turning these enchanted meats into a potion. They call it Herblore. Interesting. We have the potion all in order. Kakimex is going to be so excited when he hears about this. Sanfu said with excitement raising the potion up towards the sky. There's now one more issue to be dealt with. Sanfu, stopping his dance from excitement, then asks. And that is... Lotharius turning his head towards the east, and then after a moment of thought, moved his head to face Sanfu. Delrith the Defiler. 